Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining our Words of Wisdom, number three in a series of, of six. So we just want to thank everybody for attending today. I want a special thank you to Tanakio and Sukena and Judy for joining us and for sharing their experiences as mentees in our 2019 Wisdom Mentoring Program. So welcome, ladies. Thank you so much for joining us. So our topic today is exploring your unique DNA talent. And that's really your unique strengths or your unique abilities. Sorry about that. Um, so first of all, we can't be all good at everything, right? It's almost impossible, uh, but we can rock at some things. So put together, those things make up our talent DNA and contribute to the ways that we most authentically think, feel, and behave. They also help you answer questions like, see, people can't hear me, Gary. Can you hear me now? Yes? Okay. I think something, okay, thank you, Bianca. <laughs> apologies, I think I'm having uh, difficulties with my uh, microphone, so apologies. I'll try to keep my voice um, louder. So what we were talking about is, you know, your unique talent DNA and putting these things together is how you most authentically think, how you feel, and how you behave. Um, they all also help answer questions like, what makes you uniquely powerful? How can you become more engaged at work? And how do you become more productive in your role? And how do you live happier, a happier and healthier life? So those are some things that we're going to be talking about today. And part of the wisdom mentoring program, the cornerstone really is what you see up here on the screen is the strengths finder. And it identifies, uh, there's 34 strengths themes. And we're going to be talking to each of these ladies today about what they discovered about their own unique DNA talent. I do actually encourage you, I see some of you are using the chat, so thank you very much. I do encourage you to continue to use that if you have any questions. Uh, we'll be having a Q&A session at the end of this session so we can address some, some of your Q&A. First of all, what I'd like to do is I'd like to go to each of these ladies and ask them to introduce themselves, uh, as well as tell us a little bit about your career journey so far. So I think, Judy, can you start, please? Hi, everyone. I'm Judy. Um, um, I was in shipping for over 15 years. And then um, in 2011, I, um, I took a break, moved to New Zealand. And then when I was there, I uh, went back to school and then moved back in 2015 and continue finish my uh, master program and then I changed my career into finance. So now I'm in, uh, I work in the Scotia Bank uh, in the real estate banking. Um, it has been almost two, about two years now. Um, yeah, so that's, um, uh, so it, during my career, there, there is a big shift and uh, I find it's very, very exciting and uh, I start to learn different things and learn different knowledge. That's what I really enjoy. Wonderful. Thank you, Ju. I'd like to understand how that shift in your career, how that impacted your, your unique talent DNA as well. Okay. Not right now, but I, mean, I want to discuss that because it may have shifted for you um, from going from a different, different role or a different career trajectory. So let's keep that in mind, okay? Definitely. Thank you very much. Tana Keel? Yeah. Can you, thank yes. you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Can you hear me? I, yes, <laughs> loud and clear. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, so my career started about 19 years ago. Uh, I started as a field engineer with Schlumberger Oil Field Services. So I worked a bit in Canada, but then uh, transferred to the U.S. and moved 
to three different cities and states in the U.S. And, and the last two years, I worked offshore Gulf of Mexico as a, as a field engineer on the platforms and uh, then came back to Canada when oil and gas were super high pricing and there was lots of opportunities here in Alberta and uh, hired on with Deloitte as a grants and incentives practitioner to help uh, companies get uh, money from the federal and the provincial governments for doing R&D. So quite technical uh, a role. And then I did that for about 12 years and more recently, so about a year ago, I made a big move within Deloitte to a completely different practice in uh, the mergers and acquisitions space and uh, now helping companies that merge or separate and helping them through that process. Wonderful. Thank you very much. <laughs> CK9? Hi everyone. Can you hear me as well? Yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So my career started off uh, with a degree in computer science where I quickly realized that programming was not my thing to do. <laughs> not your strength? And so, not my strength. <laughs> Definitely not. It was not something I enjoyed doing, and I think it takes a special mindset to be able to program. So what I ended up doing is I sort of um, diverted myself more into the business area, where I could be with technology, but from a business perspective. And so what I consider the last 12, 15 years of my career being really focused in media, so I've been working with e-papers and digital replicas and have now moved from a company that I used to work with out of, based out of Vancouver, BC, as a customer success and account manager for publishers to actually working for a publisher now post media for the last three years. I am now focused on product management. So I focus on helping uh, post media grow their subscriptions and identity management systems. Wonderful. And I consider my career like a late bloomer because I took about 10 years off to raise my young family and then sort of started back in my 30s. Good for you. That takes a lot of courage. <laughs> takes a lot of courage. All right. So let's get into your unique talent DNA. So um, I actually reached out to you prior to this session and asked what your top three uh, strengths were based on the strengths finder. And I know in the wisdom program, you pick your top five. I do understand that, but what we're just for time purposes, because we're limited, I want to talk about your top three strengths. Mm -hmm. So let's start with uh, Sukena. Okay, so you told me your top three strengths uh, were restorative, mm -hmm. harmony, and input. So restorative, and it's interesting, you all had different strengths. There was only one that you had in common, and that was, um, I believe it was Judy and, yes, Judy and Sukena. You had one, right. which was restorative. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was the same, but everybody else was very unique. So I need to, I guess, let's talk about first restorative. So people, uh, this is people exceptionally talented in the restorative theme are adept at dealing with problems. They are good at figuring out what is wrong and resolving it. So can you tell me about that? Oh, Bianca says she has hers as her top five as well. Thank you, Bianca. <laughs> <laughs> so you, can you tell me about that? Was that, that a surprise to you or was that uh, something that you had already understood about yourself you know what was really neat about the whole strength finder exercise as a whole was that it helped me articulate what my strengths are you innately know that you're in the weeds you know how to solve problems you figure things out but it's when you can actually articulate and say this is the strength of it it's the fact that i'm actually good at solving the problems and figuring out what's wrong is what's made the difference in it but to me that was something that i naturally did so it was yes i kind of agreed with it when i read that description so yeah that's me. So it wasn't a surprise to you at all? Not a no, surprise? No, that one wasn't. It was the harmony that was my okay. surprise. <laughs> so we'll talk about the harmony. So that was your aha moment was the harmony one. Okay. okay totally. So, so harmony. So this one is uh, the harmony theme looks for consensus. So they don't enjoy conflict. <laughs> Rather, they seek areas of agreement. So tell us why that was an aha moment for you. 
because I've never shied away from conflict. I've always been the one to say, yes, this is what I believe. I'm strong in like saying, you know, articulating what I believe in and kind of moving forward with the plan from that perspective. So to me, it was really like going, what, really? I don't like conflict? I never realized that. But what I've noticed that since I've figured that out, that I'm actually much more collaborative in my relationships and it's made a difference for me in my career from that perspective. Because now when I'm on a team, I learn to figure out how can I bring everyone together versus saying, this is what I think is right. And just focusing on that. So that's been a really good thing for me because it's just improved my relationships and has also helped me progress from that perspective. That's great. That's great. Because that's what, you know, we were hoping with the Strengths Finder that it does improve uh, your your work relationships, your personal relationships, right? When you have that awareness around what your strengths actually are and how to mm-hmm. apply them in situations. Um, exactly. That's good. Yeah. Hey, it worked. <laughs> it, did. it totally did. It was a, it was a total shocker. Good. <laughs> Very good. And then your third one was input. Mm-hmm. And this one is... Um, they have the need to collect an archive. Oh, we lost Tanakiel. Yeah. Hopefully she'll join shortly. All right. Hopefully yeah. she comes back. Mm-hmm. So this one is need to collect an archive, and uh, they may accumulate information, ideas, artifacts, and even relationships. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it, I think it goes really well with my learner. Um, which is what one of my top five. And the, the idea that I'm always wanting to learn, I'm always reading, I'm always wanting to acquire the information and figuring out how I can apply it then. And it's not limited to just what I'm working on in terms of my career, it's, it's across the board because I'm just so interested. Now, was that a surprise? That wasn't a surprise to you though? No, that one like sort of fit in. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, no, I realized that. I didn't realize it as a strength. It was just something I did all automatically because right. right? I loved reading. I loved, you know, I'm always on the blogs and trying to figure things out and looking at different perspectives. So it was, again, just being able to articulate and say, oh, this is actually a strength. <laughs> it's not something I just do. <laughs> yeah, good. That's great. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Sakina. We'll come back to some of these other questions. So the next, Tanakil, you're back. Are you okay? <laughs> good. <laughs> You're way up, way, way, way up north, so. Yeah, sorry, I apologize. It just crept out. <laughs> so, okay. I'm back. Great. We're good to have you back. Okay, so your three were achiever, focus, and discipline. So, achiever are people uh, that work hard and possess a great deal of stamina. They take immense satisfaction in being busy and productive. So tell us about that. Tell us about how that related to you and if it was an aha moment or if you knew that was part of who you were in, in your DNA. Yeah, it's interesting. I think similar to Sakana, uh, it wasn't a surprise, but to the same point, I didn't know how to articulate that was, those were my strengths. I knew what the outcome was from those strengths, which is, Um, execution. So really good at getting the job done, doing it well, on time, high quality. So very much operations focused and that's where I've spent a lot of my career. Um, But that when someone asked me what I'm good at, I would explain it in that way versus, oh, my strengths are actually focus, discipline, and an achiever. So I think the, the exercise really helped me articulate um, what I'm good at versus what Very the good. outcome is. So the next one was focus. And it's the theme that they can take a direction, follow through and make the corrections necessary to stay on track. They provide, they prioritize and then they act. So was that a aha moment? Do you have any aha moments with any of your strengths? Um, I think more the aha moments was, and I think you mentioned this earlier, is realizing that you can't be good at everything. Uh, I think as we progress in our career, and probably most people on the call too, we're we're high achievers and we want to be good at what we do. And when you go through this exercise, I I listen to Judy and Sakina's strengths and I'm like, I want to be good at that too. (laughs) (laughs) Like, no, no, the point is you, you have your strengths and you have to narrow them down. So I think right. that, was, that was the big aha moment is 
I've got to stay focused, which is one of my strengths, so I know I can, I can achieve it um, and, and really accelerate in my strengths versus trying to be good at everything. Well said. I think a lot of us do that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us try to concentrate on our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be. We should be concentrating on, on the things that we're really good at. Yeah. Give us confidence. Then your last one was discipline. So these people enjoy routine and structure. Mm -hmm. So not me. <laughs> the world is best described by the order they create. Yes. That's it. Does that I'm, sound like you? Is that... I'm a list person. I know some people are not, but I get satisfaction of even the physical crossing off things off my list that I've set to do in the day. Um, and it, I think it works well in my personal life too. My partner is similar to me, so we don't clash. We have very same views in how we operate in the day, both engineers. <laughs> yeah. Not painting a very exciting creative picture. <laughs> It's like my, <laughs> my husband's a tool and die maker, so oh. we are <laughs> <laughs> opposites. <Yeah. laughs> That's funny. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Okay, Judy. Your three strengths were relator, restorative, like Sukena, and analytical. So relater are people that enjoy close relationships with others. They find deep satisfaction in working hard with friends to achieve a goal. Did that, how did that stay with you when you, you heard that was one of your strengths? So this one um, is not a surprise to me. Um, I just found it's um, very natural to me. I, I really enjoy work in the team environment and being a team player and working together with uh, my teammates and just to work hard and achieve common goals. So this one was, uh, I, I, I found it's, it's just natural, very natural to me. And then restorative was, again, dealing with problems, uh, good at figuring things out, what is wrong, and resolving them. Was that an aha moment for you? Uh, no, this one no? has been in my um, uh, DNA um, previously as well. Like the first time I did, uh, it's also show up there. Um, yeah, so being, um, I, I just found that I'm a adapt thinker. And I'm good at adapting my mindset to new situations or, and then deal with problems quickly. That's just, um, I, I found this is just uh, something, I, maybe um, the work I, I did before and then practice a lot. And then it's just feel like it's part of me that's natural as well. Good. And then analytical. So people like this search for reasons and causes. They have the ability to think about all the factors that might affect a situation. So this one, uh, it's a surprise to me this time. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, well, uh, this is a new, new thing came up um, uh, this time. But I, now I think back, I probably didn't realize what I like the work I did I actually had to use a lot of a lot of uh, analytical skills but I it just not uh, realized that that uh, was my strength so um, but now I'm I think back that I do um, I like to gather data and analyze information before I I present or I make a pitch a new ideas and I'm good at taking in and thinking different like cause and effects um, for uh, for any situations so yeah so this one um, was a surprise but uh, um, I did had to utilize that skill a lot good okay so my next questions are more around, you know, you, you, you take 
click in the strength finder, you know what your top five strengths are. Once you know that and you're very aware of that, can you tell me how, like practically, how did you put that knowledge to work for you in your career, maybe even in your personal, your personal life? Tanakil, can you start? Oh, can't hear you. Sorry, Tanakil, you're on mute. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Um, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I, I'm much more uh, prescriptive in what I choose to spend my time on throughout the day. And can you give us some examples of that. I'm just curious how you, um, how you figured that out. It, it, it might also come back to this. I have a bit of that fear of missing out and now we're bombarded with so much information. Uh, I work for a large firm. There's constantly points of view coming out and, and you could spend 24 hours a day learning, learning and being part of everything. Um, and if you have that, that, that feeling that you want to learn everything, then it's, it, it will sap all your energy and you won't end up spending time doing the things that you're really good at. And so, tying in my strengths to, to having that awareness has helped me um, be more energized every day. And, uh, and it's every day it's work to do that because I'm always pulled to, to different things that I want to know what's going on and be involved in. And I have to pull myself back and say, no, focus on the things that you're good at and it's in your inner circle. And that's where you'll you'll get the most energy and you'll add the most value. That's great. How has that been working? Um, really, really good until COVID. <laughs> COVID's thrown everything out the door. And <laughs> for someone who's used to routine, this, this has been a big change, but I'm sure that's probably another session for another day <laughs> about COVID. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. Completely... yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, Judy, let's go to you. Um, okay. So, so I how think, have... can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I think certain types of uh, jobs or tasks attract you more um, because you know how to, how to apply your, your talents to the demands of a situation. And, and as I said, the more you do, the more you practice, the better you get. Um, so for me, um, I was in shipping business for many years. In the shipping industry, people face changes all the time. So being flexible and adaptable to changes are constant demands. Um, so I enjoy analyzing situations and putting uh, pieces of puzzle together to provide solutions and uh, to problems. So some people feel the job is stressful, but the nature of the job excites me. And being able to use restorative and analytical skills um, in the environment feels very rewarding. So that knowing what I like to do and uh, do what I do best, that's, um, I, I found that works really well for me. So it gives you, it's rewarding, but it also probably, does it give you more confidence, do you find? Yes. That you do? Yes, definitely, yes. So are you able to, so I was in the shipping industry and now you've changed industries, obviously. Um, how do your strengths fit into your current role? Um, so my current role that I, I noticed that I use more analytical skills uh, um, and also to um, uh, the relator uh, strength as well, like because the job itself that I, I do a lot, a lot of uh, analysis um, for, for my clients, uh, um, their inf information, and then also uh, to provide uh, customer service. 
and we need to work together in in a team environment to provide the service and also um, work with customers that I, I found I use more analytical and uh, relator uh, strength in, in that aspect. Okay, that's great. So you're still using the strengths that, and you're very aware of that, I would imagine, as you're working through that in your new job, in this job. Yes. Okay, very good. All right, so Sukenya, what about you? How did you put that knowledge to work in a practical way? either in your professional or your, your personal life? I think um, professionally what I've been doing is I, um, because I'm so strong in my restor restorative skills and so much into the weeds sometimes in solving problems that I need to sort of pull myself out and sort of focus on the strategy and the direction. And so just realizing that two of my strengths who sort of focus on the strategic leadership side of um, the, the domain has helped mm -hmm. me sort of develop and sort of work with my relationships and actually establishing um, the direction that we actually take our product rather than just taking the top down direction that I was previously. Like now I'm able to actually provide input into like, I think this is the direction we should go because of all this extra information I have. And that I think has made a huge difference because it's helping me progress in my career from just being at the implementation and execution level to move into a slightly higher path and role. So would you say that was because you gained more confidence, understanding your strengths, and now you're able to provide more bottom-up information? Exactly, to... yeah, no. I would say it was a confidence, and again, it's just the recognition of knowing that this is actually one of your strengths and not a weakness. Or not and to embrace it. To embrace, embrace it, it. exactly. Yeah, no, exactly. Okay. Good. Good information. So the next question I have, and then we're, we're going to talk a little bit about the imposter syndrome, because I think it's still um, very prevalent in a lot of women these days, uh, including myself. So the, but the last question I want to ask here is, um, what sorts of outcomes have you noticed as a result of knowing your talent DNA? So let's start with Sukenya. Sukenya? Um, I think recognizing actually embracing the harmony talent DNA has actually helped me improve my relationships with, with the leadership team that I'm working with because now I'm much more collaborative and, and the way I approach um, our team gatherings and the input that I provide because now I'm much more of a facilitator okay. rather than, and that I think has made a huge difference. What did you do before, before you knew before I knew, I think yeah, before, you... before I, I would be quicker to take a stand. Now I'm much more open to listening. And I think that's what's made the huge difference. Before I'd be like, I have an opinion and I'm going to give you my opinion. <laughs> but now it's like, I will still give you my opinion, but I'll listen and I'll also kind of um, frame back the phrase to someone else who's giving the direction and saying, okay, this is what I'm understanding from what you're telling me. And that's much more collaborative and much more in, in the sense of I'm building a consensus with them and coming to middle ground versus. That's good. That's a, big, that's a big, that's a big learning. Yeah. Yes. It's a big learning think, because a lot of leaders aren't, aren't aware of how they position themselves in a, in a situation or in a meeting. So that's great that, can you hear me? I'm sorry, that you're, you know, that you're more yeah. collaborative. Uh, with that. So that's great. I'm glad that you, you learned that. So let's go to Judy. Judy, what outcomes have you noticed as a result of knowing your talent DNA? Um, yeah, knowing my own strengths, um, I'm more confident. I'm more confident in asking people what I, what I want. For example, um, I wanted to know an industry and customers more in depth and using my analytical skills, I let my previous director know that, um, know when I apply for my current position. Um, she helped me tremendously in the interview process because she knew the position match with my strength. Um, so some people may feel vulnerable uh, to put yourself there, out there, but I, 
I believe knowing yourself and doing what you love to do um, will allow you to thrive in the field you you chosen. So this is, um, yeah, I just feel like I'm, I feel comfortable uh, let people know what I'm interested in and um, yeah, and more confident asking as well. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Hey, Tana Keel, what about you? Yeah, um, so because my strengths align with execution, a uh, big part of that is, is putting together a team that's going to execute and working with, with the team to be able to execute. Um, and one of the other strengths that I had was individualization. So I had to look at what that meant. And it means that I'm, I have a good understanding of what other people's strengths are as well and how I can bring those people with their strengths together to complement mine. And as I've progressed in, in, our, uh, in our firm, I coach a lot of others. And so I, I'm at the table with them, understanding the other thing that brings all our different strengths together. And that's, oh, can you still hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah, you're, okay. you're cutting in and out, but I'm, okay. I'm okay. yeah. Um, which I think I've grown in that and matured because before I would gravitate to people who had the same strengths as me. And now I realize that in order to be a stronger team, it makes sense to bring together everyone with different strengths. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. So when you discovered your strengths through this program, did you, how did you uh, let your, your leader know or your company, how was, did you have a conversation with them about your strengths? I know Judy, you said that, you know, you weren't afraid to take that next leap because you had confidence in your, in your strengths, but how did you let your company know or your, um, your leader know? Was there a conversation that you had after you had these aha moments? Uh, yeah, I, I did have a conversation with my uh, previous director, like when I was in, um, during the workshop. After the first workshop, um, I actually discussed uh, what we did in the workshop with my director. And um, one thing that when I, I, I mentioned to, to her about the, the Clifton Strength survey, and then, uh, and also my, um, my strength and um, I really like when I when I she pointed out that um, like uh, one of my strengths was responsibility and um, she pointed out that responsibility is a great strength but if if you don't push yourself to say no you put yourself into an unhealthy overwork situation. I was surprised to hear that at first. Then when I later reflect on my own experiences and, and it, I found, oh, it, it was true and it happened a few times. And then it, it was a wake up call. And I was so glad that I had that conversation with her. And that's something I learned that a, a strength can be a weakness. And so I, now I'm aware of that. I have to learn how to say no to certain, um, certain asks. Good. That's great. Okay. Sutena, so did you go, how did, how did your conversation go with your leader or? Um, so I think what I've been doing is that I've, done it in a twofold way. One is that I've actually adjusted the way I behave and approach problems. So I think that's made a huge impact because suddenly, because I'm working out of my strengths and not the uncertainty of my weaknesses, and that's been the focus, I'm much more confident in the way I approach things. So I think that's been really a positive thing. And then what I've done is use the last six months to sort of work towards a follow-up conversation to career growth. And then again, it's sort of like, look, these are the things I'm good at. I know these are my strengths. How can I progress further from this role? And that's where it's been really positive. So it's and helped with your conversations. This is it helped. has definitely good. helped, yeah. 
Yeah, it's definitely helped from that perspective. But I think you, it's sort of like you have to do the action as well as the conversation. Yes. One thing, right? To know your strengths, yeah. another to behave with that strength. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Very good. Anna Keel? Um, I, I became much more selective in what, where I dive and put my effort into. And as a result, I've, I think I'm much more effective in the work that I am doing and taking on. And that innately is, I think, building confidence in those areas, uh, which is, which is ultimately the big thing is, is building confidence, especially because I did move into another group fairly recently. Um, so that's, that's kind of the goal in my goal oriented way. <laughs> <laughs> so have you found moving into a different group like mer mergers and acquisitions that your talent DNA shifted a bit? What, what mm -hmm. I learned through the process is at first I was terrified and then I realized how many of the skills are transferable and you when you start out your career, it's very prescriptive. You have to learn certain things in order to be able to do whatever role you're being assigned to do. But as you progress, those skill sets become more sophisticated and, and they're so there, but they're not necessarily a certificate in something, right? You build them up. And, and as I progressed in this role, I realized how much I was bringing to the table in my 12 years in another role. Um, so now I just have to learn some of the, the more, um, the more, I guess it's the easier stuff. <laughs> it's the stuff <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can take a course in and that's easy, I find, so. Wonderful, thank you ladies for sharing your, uh perspectives. I appreciate it. So we're going to go with some of the, there's some questions that came in uh, with uh, the registrations that we're going to go to. And I'm just going to look at some questions here that are up on the screen. So here's a good one and it's, it has to do with COVID. Um, so from Lauren McDonald, uh, I'm curious to know if you have discovered new strengths or brought forward latent strengths during COVID. That's an interesting question. Who wants to answer that one? Did you hear what I asked? Did, did you hear me okay? Yeah, no, we heard you. Yeah. Okay, who wants to? So has anybody had new strengths or brought forward latent strengths during COVID? Have they found anything new? I don't think I found anything new, but what I did find is that because we were working from home, it became even more important to sort of take on the existing strengths and just hone in on them in terms of the responsibility of making sure things got done, like the follow-up that you needed to do. Um, making sure that your team meetings were a lot more smoother because there was no fate. like there was video conferencing obviously but no real in the room participation and networking from that perspective and I also found that COVID's taken out a lot of the extra noise that you have when you're in, a, in an office environment where there is the tendency to sort of have off the book chats and things like that because now everything's sort of either on a phone call or a meeting that's planned. That's so, so as far as your strengths Sukena, did you see anything that maybe didn't change, but it became much more dominant? I think my responsibility became more dominant because I, I knew I had to just be on top of it and make sure things were getting done. That was the one that I okay. found became way stronger for me because it was that follow through of the action, right? Because now you're still right. hope on your own, so you have to make sure you're following through. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Judy, what about you? Um, you were more dominant? Um, I don't have any new, but uh, I totally agree with Sukena that um, my responsibility, responsibility strength also um, helped me to um, keep track of like uh, what, what we have to do, what we have to achieve and get things done um, in time and, uh, organ and also prioritize organizing. Yeah. 
So that's, uh, yeah, my responsibility strengths that kick in and dominate more. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Keel, you had mentioned that everything went out the window for you. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm curious to... <laughs> I'm really struggling to find out which strengths have come out of the woodwork. Um, it's, it's been just some weird times. I, I find people are more vulnerable. And even though we're, we're not beside each other anymore, there's more, there's more understanding for craziness that's going on around everybody's lives because everybody's lives are so different and everyone has different challenges. Um, and it's almost a more intimate, I find, with my clients and my team. And, and yeah, you're not hiding anything anymore. Um, you don't have to look all polished when you get to work. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's fine with that. And, and I don't know, it's, it's been crazy. There's some, there's some good stuff that's obviously coming out of it. Um, I'm trying to think how that relates to my strengths, and I'm not quite sure <laughs> yet. <laughs> Have any been more dominant at all? Have any come through where you, you know, because it's a challenging situation, right? It There's is, yeah. Maybe discipline. I think maybe fitting in kids home from school and, and everything, everything scheduled, thrown out the window and still trying to make sure that, that I achieve everything I'm trying to achieve and the routine's been shaken up, so... Ladies, let's see what other questions we have here. I think we're going to go into, let's talk about the imposter syndrome. Uh, because it, you know, it does focus around uh, lack of confidence in your abilities, in your talents. Um, you know, not not seeing yourself as others may perceive you. So, can you tell me? Did did you did any of you have or have uh, the imposter syndrome? Tana Keel, you had yes. Did, Oh yeah. Was it prior prior to wisdom or do you still do you still oh, struggle yeah. with it? I still struggle with it. I, I didn't know the name of it until recently. Um, what I, what I've noticed and and as I've become closer with a number of women, um, it helps to to talk it out and, and other women to support each other. And more and more I'm realizing how important that is. Because to your point, it's how you're perceived by others is not how you usually perceive yourself. You're usually a lot harder on yourself. Uh, yeah. What I find interesting is often when we have very successful women in careers who, who are asked, how did they become so successful? And, and often the first thing they say is I was lucky. And it's just so interesting, right? Because I'm sure lucky is not the first thing that allowed them to become <laughs> successful. It would have been, working hard, being smart, doing all these things, but, and luck is part of it. And I get that, but for the, to be the first thing that comes out of someone's mouth, it right away, it's no, we need to give each other more credit than that. And we need to give, yeah, each other more credit. So I'm learning, but it's there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it still is there. And, and, and I think it's just becoming aware of it and recognizing it, but, but also, um, Sukanya, do you, how do you feel about the imposter syndrome? Do you feel that you have it or had it or how has the wisdom program helped you move forward from it? Struggle. I think it's a constant struggle um, in the sense that, you know, that self-belief, right? You know you can do it, but actually to be able to say, put your hand up and say, no, I will do it or to believe that you can, you know? Um, I think what's helped is... Um, the mentorship's definitely helped having someone who's been in a similar, like very different career path, but the trajectory of our career has been similar in the sense that we've fallen into different roles and excelled. And I think that was very helpful. Um, the other thing that I did do after the wisdom mentoring program is realize that I need a little bit more career coaching and that's helped with the mindset work. Look at so more I, what? I'm sorry. 
sorry, a career coaching. So okay. I decided to actually get a career coach and that helped tremendously in terms of just the mindset work. And how do you find a career, to, how'd you find a career coach? I'm just curious. Um, I actually, uh, we at Postmedia, we hired a new VP of product and I really admired her and I admired the way she was approaching things. And so just spoke to her and asked because I've been asking women around about whether they had career coaches and I found that was, so she recommended someone and I sort of had a call with her and I found this made a huge difference also like adding on to, you know, your strengths, but it's the mindset work, right? To be able to shift the emotion out of it. Mm -hmm. And to be able to just approach pro problems a little bit more objectively. Yes. I found the two together. Because I think what I do notice is that a lot of successful women, or even, and possibly even successful men, I think they do have a coach or someone else on the side to sort of bounce off of. Mm -hmm. And that helps when it's a safe environment. Yes, I so. absolutely. And I think the mentorship has been excellent in that, but just needing a little bit more is what I felt. But the mentor did help you? Your mentor helped By you? Far, I mean, she's been amazing. And then the fact that she's actually continued the relationship even outside oh, of the great. year. So it's like, she's, yeah, no, I total. Who was it? Who was your mentor? It was Benny, I, Benny Ioza. She's oh, from, she's amazing. Yeah. She is CIBC. absolutely amazing. Yeah, no, totally. And I mean, just even being able to call her up and say, well, you know, I'm not sure what my next role should look like. And it's just having that, like, well, yeah, no, exactly, you know, figure out your transferable skills, like, and things like that have been really good. So it's been great to have the duel. Yes, absolutely. Good. Yeah, very good. Really I know Benny very well. She's uh, Benny's one of our she is absolutely WX and ambassadors as well. So very good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Judy, thank you, Sakina. Judy? Um, yes. Um, I think we, um, like, for me, sometimes I... I think we are more aware of our own weakness and then put too much attention to the, the uh, our weakness and then never feel like good enough. Um, but, uh, <laughs> and, and they often happen to me too. And I, like, sometimes I found it helped to talk to others like your friends, your, your colleague, and, um, and this mentorship program, um, uh, it helps me a lot, like being aware of my, my strength. And also um, my mentor, Diane McCarty, um, she, she was amazing leader and uh, she helped me. Um, I had um, a few sections meetings with her and uh, that was during my, um, transition between my um, in the bank between different jobs in the interview process and um, she, like just by talking to her and and then she she really made me feel grounded and and gave me confidence and and that that was a very great opportunity and great um, mentorship program for me very good that's, I'm I'm really happy to hear that. And Tanaquil, did you did you um how was your mentor and, and tell us about your experience with with women? Yeah, she she was really good. I loved the way I had someone to talk to that was outside of my bubble and my world of of consulting. And she's a lawyer, so we still had similar challenges, but at the same time, she could bring such a clean <laughs> perspective. Um, and that's what I love too about the other, the other women in the program. Uh, you get so caught up sometimes, especially because I've been with an organization for so long that it was good to see other perspectives and, and hear, hear views that weren't so embedded in the organization that I've been in for so long. And she provided such a good, clean perspective. And she challenged me, which was good. Yeah, that's important. Okay. Who was it? Uh, Melinda. Okay. Conrad? Yeah. Yeah. Or Park. Sorry. Her name is Park. Yeah. yeah. Very good. And Judy, who was your mentor? My, uh, Diane McCarthy. McCarty. Okay. Yeah. I love Diane. She's awesome. Okay. That's great. So... 151, I'm just watching the clock, but I'm, you know, I'm just looking at the imposter syndrome and 
I think it is, you know, a, a few things. It is good that you recognize your own strengths and that you're aware of them so that you can focus on your strengths and not your weaknesses. I also think it's great that you have a community like WXN or, you know, another community where you can come together and, and talk to other women and we can, you know, continue to build each other up. It's so important, you know, that we are there for each other and that we, we build, we don't tear down each other because I've seen that happen so much. You would not believe it. And it's just, you know, it's heartbreaking. So, and I also, you know, finding a mentor as well is really great or a career coach. Um, just to be part of your journey is really important too, because when you're feeling, you know, we all have bad days and more so <laughs> recently in the last few weeks or months than, than before. And it's great to have that person to, to be your champion, right? To be your sounding board and uh, to, to tell you that you know you're you're great and you're doing wonderful things and to continue your path and because the imposter you know the imposter syndrome it doesn't really go away and I don't know why um, and and I'd love to put this question out like why do women have this imposter syndrome right so I'm looking for you know answers from the audience, from, from the three of you, like, why? Why do women have this? Wanna, does anybody speak. want? <laughs> <laughs> if I may speak, I think it has to do with the fact that we are very hard on ourselves. We look to be flawless and try to, perfect, to be perfectionist. And so because we're always trying, to, traditionally women have been in those roles where we want to do it all, right? We're still responsible for raising our family having a home cooked meal. And now with, you know, since the advent of careers and stuff, also working outside and we're trying to be perfect in all areas. Right. And then that's where you feel like, okay, I'm not perfect a hundred percent in all three. So therefore I'm not doing, you know, I'm not good enough. At least for me, that's how it's always been. Right. Cause I was raised to be an all rounder and only to realize that no, it has to be focused in and hone in. Yes. Yes. Good. <laughs> Very good. I like that explanation. Anybody else want to add to that? Yes, we are perfectionists. And yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. We look after the family. Like, typically, we look mm -hmm. after the family, right? We have to make, you know, the dinner on the table. Maybe not so much with, anymore. But yes, I mean, there's still those, <laughs> those, still those responsibilities that we, we take the burden onto ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. Because we feel that that's, because we're nurturers too, right? And caregivers. Yeah. So I think that's part of it. Do you, Judy or Tanaquil, Tanaquil, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to add any more to this yeah. conversation? I think the, the confidence piece is a big one. And I've, I've read excerpts from that confidence code book, which I know has, has got a lot of um, publicity and I, I bought it for my daughter and there's a child's version and I'm already starting to read it to her and she's fighting me the whole What way. is it again? I'm but, sorry. Uh, Can you... it's, it's called the confidence code. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The code. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and it goes through a number of studies, but some of them are fascinating. Uh, and it, I think you've probably all heard that women will apply for a job if they meet every single skill set that's posted. Men will apply if it's, you know, 60% and they figure they'll figure out the rest on the job um, so it's it's pretty deep rooted and it comes at a young age um, and, and the other piece is that that confidence thing is fascinating there's there's been studies where if someone knows 80% of the information they're telling you and 20% they're making it up but they believe in it then you're more likely to believe them too because it's not malicious they're not trying to sneak something through they just honestly think that they know it all, even though they're only 80%, right? And uh, more men are, are going to have that behavior. Whereas more women will tell you 80% because they're confident about the 80% and the 20% they're not confident about, they'll tell you they're not confident about it. <laughs> so they won't even try and <laughs> so right away. Like you're going you're gonna to think that person who tells you 100%, 80% is right, you're going to think they're more confident. So it starts early. Um, yeah, so I'm working on my daughter. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> good, good. We're hoping the next generation, because I, I mean, I deal with it too, still. Um, but yeah.
So thank you, ladies. I appreciate you being here today. We have four more minutes and I have the three rapid fire questions that I said I was going to ask you. Okay, so no thinking, no analytical people here. Thank you. Okay. I just want you to answer the questions. I've asked, I've asked every single panelist these questions. Question number one, and we'll start with Judy, then we'll go to Sukana, and then we'll go to Tanaka, okay? What was your go-to comfort food during the COVID shutdown? Judy? Chocolate. <laughs> chocolate and chips. <laughs> chocolate and chips? Chocolate. Okay. Chocolate, oh. chocolate, okay. Oh. Nachos. Okay. So lots of carbs there. Okay. <laughs> Number two. Exactly carbs and sugar. <laughs> so what did you miss most during the, the COVID shutdown? Uh, the social part of the uh, interact with, interaction with uh, coworkers and uh, clients. Okay. Ms. Kenya? Um, coffee dates. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry? Coffee dates by Tim Hortons. <laughs> okay, okay. Aww. <laughs> I'm, I'm ditto Judy, Sukena, and my walk to work every morning. I missed it. Aww. Yeah, I think somebody just said they missed hugs, and I'm, I'm a hugger, and I, I miss hugs, like especially my mom, right, because I couldn't see her for a little while. She's 91, so we really needed to protect her, but yeah, hugs for sure. And the last one, because we've been shut in and not going anywhere or traveling anywhere, if you could go anywhere in the world right now, where would it be and why? Judy? Um, Taiwan. Uh, I want to see my mom too. Yeah, I haven't seen her for uh, two, two, three years now. Sorry, you chat with her and she's good. Is she good? Everything's healthy. Yeah, everything's healthy, but uh, she's getting old, and uh, yeah. Well, here's here's hoping things will get better, and you'll be able to to go see her. Yeah. Kenya? I would love to do an African safari, to go back back home. My roots are from Africa. So fun. Oh, that's fun. Have you ever done that before? I haven't done the safari, no, but I am from Africa, so I have been there. Yeah. Oh, that would be, I would love to do that too. Let me know when you can go. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Anna Keel? Uh, mine was Ireland. We were supposed to take my mom this summer, so hopefully next summer. Yeah, are you, go visit. That, are you, are you I've never there? been, and my mom is from there, and I've never met so many relatives that are there. So oh, wonderful. It's, it's yeah. Wonder, I've been there multiple times. Oh, love it. Yeah. Love it. It's beautiful. And the people are so lovely. I've heard. Lovely people. Okay, everybody, that's, uh, that's a wrap for today. So I want to thank everybody um, for participating. Thank you, the audience, for being here. And... Uh, learning about our unique talent DNA mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the imposter syndrome and uh, supporting one another today. So I just have a few more things that I wanna chat with you about, but thank you ladies. I appreciate it. Please be safe, stay well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just a few more things before everybody pops off. I just wanna let you know about our upcoming events. So we have uh, two more words of wisdom uh, on September the 9th, advice on building a professional network. And then we have a very special guest on September the 16th, uh, Melissa McCray. Melissa is our instructor for the wisdom program for 2021. So please, if you want more information about the wisdom program, please join us on September 16th. She's gonna go through it as like a mentoring 101. And then if you want to become part of a powerful community, we would encourage you to please join WXN. Uh, we have a special on right now that runs until December, 2020. It's a one-time payment of $99 or 825 a month, which is a cup of coffee at Starbucks, I think. So <laughs> please invest in WXN and uh, we'd, uh, we'd appreciate you continue to help us build our little powerful army of women across Canada. And thank you again to our speakers. Uh, if you want to connect with them, uh, here's how you can do it.
And thank you. We, can, we wouldn't be able to do this without all our sponsors. So thank you very much. And especially to our national event series partner, Loblaw Canada, Loblaw Companies Limited. And some more virtual events coming up. We've been busy, as you can see. We have our last summer sizzle with WXN on August the 27th. And it's all about happiness. Uh, mm -hmm. We could all use a little bit more happiness and the smile, uh, the science behind the smile. So please join us for that. That's tomorrow night. And then we start a brand new series called Monday Mojo with WXN. And it is our WXN ambassadors. As I said, Benny uh, Iozo is one of our ambassadors along with, uh, I believe, 24 others. And they're going to be hosting every week from September 14th until the end of December 2021, uh, a monthly mojo or mon Monday mojo with WXN. So they're gonna be talking about all kinds of, of topics uh, for your career and for your professional and personal life. So the first one is with Tara Wilson and Ritu Gupta. And they're gonna be talking about understanding your authentic leadership values. And then of course, we have Unite and Rise, a webinar series that we started in April. We're wrapping them up in October and November. October 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th are workshops for, called Rising Strong. You may have heard of Rising Strong by Brene Brown. Uh, we have that Jen Lofgren, she's a top 100 award winner and a certified coach for Brene Brown. So she is going to be teaching us about Rising Strong. And then in November, we have Be Calm and Take Control and ignite your leadership with the power of presence. And then in December, we have our Canada's Most Powerful Women Top 100, the Virtual Leadership Summit on December 2nd, and December 3rd, the Virtual Awards Gala. And again, if you're interested in joining the Wisdom Mentoring Program, it does start in January, runs from January until December 2021. Uh, for members, it's $900 or three equal payments of $300. For non-member, it's $1,200 or three equal payments of $400. So please check that out um, and join us for our Wisdom Mentoring Program for 2021. Or tell your company that you want to join. Get a purchase order. <laughs> and then our upcoming free virtual book club events. We have several of these uh, booked out into 2021. So please check out our website. These amazing authors are all top 100 award winners uh, and it's really, you know, they have been amazing in, in the book reading and just learning uh, new things and it's just, you need to be a part of it. It's a really great program. And thank you for joining us today. Everybody be safe, be well, and we'll see you the next time. Yeah. Bye ladies. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you, Sherry. Bye. Bye, ladies. Bye. Bye. Thank you.